everybody, welcome to the channel, my name is Sunny. So, I'm just gonna open up with a quick disclaimer. I wrote and rehearsed this script right before I became aware of this new drama surrounding Haluva boss employees. I went to revise the script just slightly to include this situation in my argument in a very small way and on a very basic level. However, that's kinda not the focus of this video. So... A lot of people have been having the same conversations about fandoms for a while now. They can be, and most likely are, insanely bonkers. I actually remember when I was a part of the Steven Universe fandom during its, I guess, I think third season? There was a lot of chatter about its absolutely insanely toxic fanbase surrounding fan artists, shippers, and theorizers. Most notably is the case where a ton of people pushed a fan artist to almost unalive herself over her art style. The Good Omens fandom, which I'm also a part of, can be pretty up there in terms of toxicity too, for similar reasons. I mean, we're looking at massive crowds of people with tons of factions and infighting over really, really petty stuff. And some not so petty stuff. The nuance in these conversations, I feel, comes a little too late. Obviously, every fandom is going to have pockets of fans who are overly obsessed and involved on different levels. Fandom haters swoop in to make the mess bigger, and then there's just the average fan, clutching their little doodle pad all huddled up in a corner with their cat head hoodie concealing the massive confusion and disappointment on their face. But. What about when the fighting turns external and all this crazy mess starts to drag the whole foundation of the fandom down with it? Fan and creator toxicity is what I want to focus on today, because it's been absolutely out of control lately. Needless to say, I think that Haluva Boss slash Husband Hotel fandom is very different, but also very much the same as what I stated above. We all know that there are many, many, many things about these shows that break new grounds. I mean, there aren't many shows that operate like Haluva Boss, being that it's mostly merch and Patreon supported, but seemingly so put together and successful as an internet startup. There wasn't this super long, drawn out Kickstarter campaign, and there wasn't actually too much chatter even about Haluva Boss until it kind of just appeared. Of course, people had been talking about Hasbin Hotel a bit, especially with the early clips being released and a few Q&As here and there. It's clear that the show had a strong path and was here to deliver, and deliver it did. In turn, we support and trust the show. It's not scamming us and robbing us blind like a lot of online startups do, and I think that was a huge part of its success. But I also think this sense of fan entitlement is due to the fact that this show is homegrown on the internet. You can really see it happening and sort of evolving to be out of control over the span of the show. I think a good place to witness a lot of these fan conversations is obviously on Twitter, unfortunately. Now it's not too common for shows like these that you'd have an insane amount of access to the creator and I think that's also what's fueling this. So let's go through some stuff right now and let me give you a gist of what I'm talking about. So these are comments in response to the updated character design announcement. And you get the sense of entitlement like Lucy personally stabbed their mothers in the chest. And some people were kind of suggesting that the show got corporatized and it's everyone's worst nightmare. I totally get what they're coming from. Not wanting to see a creator's freedom of expression to be halted or enjoying what you thought the show was going to be based off of the pilot. But I don't know if they understand how drastically a show can change between the pilot and the first episode. Take Steven Universe or Gravity Falls. I mean, it's hard to argue that a lot of these changes were in for the betterment of the show. Same thing happened with the fact that they switched around the voice actors after the pilot. People were pissed, and I definitely get it. That's the most understandable one for me, actually. Again, my problem is the hate is way, way out of proportion. Anyway, just add it to the pile, because we're moving on. The entitlement snowballs a bit from there. 
And if you don't believe me, check out the responses from fans who found out there would be a schedule change. This announcement came, by the way, only a couple weeks ago. Due to copyright issues, unfortunately, Vipsy is going to have to delay episode 8 of season 1, skip it, and give us episode 1 of season 2. I know it's a little complicated, but they're saying that episode 8 isn't a true finale and wouldn't harm anything if it came out later. A lot of people were concerned about this. Rightfully so, in my opinion. I mean, I hate to see that this is a problem for them. But, well, I'll read you off these next tweets because it's a lot. This announcement came only a couple weeks ago, and as you can see, the resentment is palpable. Episode 8 wasn't going to follow the plotline anyway. It was basically going to be a filler episode. Mmm, put here, it sounds like episode 8 is a pointless waste of time. Viv bit off way more than she could chew, and it's biting her in the ass, and it's showing. Wait between episodes is longer and longer, not to mention legal issues. Then there's husband hotel on the side. Rolling the face emoji. <laughs> but can you tell us why episode 8 of season 1 is so hard to release? Force is quite literally out of my control, quote unquote doesn't really explain anything you know what are those forces i'm just curious you gotta be effing kidding me damage control for incompetence and indecisiveness but all right bruh so you drop previews for episode 8 but can't show it so you keep season 2 what sense does that make raised eyebrow emoji times three <laughs> It turns out that we've been waiting eight months for just unnecessary filler, and now you're saying you want to skip it? Starting the second season without completing the first is not just strange, it's kinda silly, no offense, but I'm a little disappointed and upset. Um, yeah, so that was a reaction, and a lot of these reactions were actually agreed upon, like they were the top comments. Some of them were the top comments, not all of them. But yeah, that's kind of gross. There's some speculation, of course, about what's holding episode 8 back. Some say it could have to do with the fact that this is an independent show, and it parallels another show that Vivzy made, which was bought by a company. There could be some trouble with references between the two shows that they had to work out. Actually, it could be any number of things, literally. And that's why I say, don't worry about it. They know what they're doing, and the pressure people are putting on them to figure it all out is kind of counterintuitive. As an artist, I can say for certain that projects I dedicate so much time and effort into are very, very personal to me. I take a lot of pride in my art, and I want to see a project I spent so much time on seen through like this youtube channel so i would say the show has been great so far please guys just trust that this artist most likely wants the best for her show outside of those tweets there does seem to be a big upset with this artist for other reasons the two points of contention seem to be a the voice actor swap and b the allegations i guess surrounding the workplace first the voice actor swap yeah, this is a huge deal and I can't say I'm not super upset about it either. To be fair, I don't know if Vivzi was the one who would have agreed to doing this, or even if she pushed for it to happen. If you don't know, pilots are meant to kinda sell the show. If the show sells and the studio picks it up or a production company does, you get creatives from the head office of that company negotiating with you, the creator, on what to change about your show like changing the character design, the animation style, the story, and unfortunately, the cast. I can't see why the people would want to recast the voice actors who were doing an amazing job and were beloved by fans for so long, but they were kind of the personalities that jump-started the series, and you hear a lot of buzz about how Vivzy only used them to discard them once the show was greenlit. But like I said, it might be completely out of her hand, when a show is bought and greenlit, a creator doesn't own any rights to that show anymore. It belongs to the company. Unfortunately, that's just how it works. Second, the allegations of a toxic work environment. I'm a little disappointed to hear that there's been a bit of a situation going on with the work environment in Haluva Boss. An ex-employee who worked on Haluva Boss described the work environment there to be toxic that the artists were overworked and that Vivzy encouraged trashing other cartoon shows constantly. 
Which, yeah, sounds pretty bad. If that's true, then that's really disappointing. But then again, there's kind of no evidence, as a lot of people pointed out. And just now, we got an update that employees have been debunking these claims that the work environment was toxic, so it's all up in the air. One of the worst parts, I think, is the mental health toll these attitudes take on not only Bibsy, but the other creators who have been managing this project, and anyone else who has to talk about this project online. It's just that Vibzy has been getting the brunt of it, of course, because she's a figurehead and the show creator, understandably. So Vibzy has been talking a lot about how she's feeling down and terrible lately. She's not too open about it, but every once in a while, she uh, lets people know. On May 26th, she wrote, The world is depressing. Work is depressing. Life is depressing. Right now, everything is depressing. Thank goodness for my cat. On June 4th, she wrote, My mental health is at an all-time low between everything online and behind the scenes. I've already been having trouble getting back to my messages, but it's going to continue. As besides being overwhelmingly busy, I'm going to try to spend less time online. I'm sorry. I think this is something we should really curb and call out more often. Why are we doing this stuff to our supposedly favorite creators? This isn't even canceling. Well, the stuff that doesn't involve the workplace drama, because that's kind of canceling. The, the rest of it, though, is straight-up harassment for less than no reason. Like, guys, pull yourself together. This is crazy. A lot of people were like, yeah, this is a free show on the internet, you know. I just don't understand how people can be so entitled and so nasty. I guess I do. It's the internet. This is nothing new. But like I said earlier, just because this is the internet just because this happens all the time doesn't make it okay and it doesn't mean that you should not talk about it i mean at the very least these people deserve a little bit of stigma for acting this entitled that's all i'm gonna say for now thank you guys for watching this ranty ish video it was just getting on my nerves to see this stuff going on i hope this didn't you know feel more like a toe sucking contest for vivzy it wasn't meant to be like that. It's just that a lot of these conversations are extremely unfair and extremely un, un one sided um, on the side of entitlement. And I don't know how I feel about talking about like the actual drama part, but as, as, as far as the workplace issues, they are somewhat relevant. I could have included them more, but the story is still unfolding and it's really hard to. And I just meant to talk about this part. Um, If you guys liked it, don't forget to maybe like or subscribe or comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know how this video was. Did I get anything wrong? Did I miss anything? You know, I'm willing to update my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and yeah, bye.